There you go. I just wondered if Dan was listening. He doesn't have yeah, a headphone yeah. in. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. I was just saying, if you're paying attention, Dan. I just, am. Yeah, yep. No headphones in. I didn't think you could hear the introduction music. Hello, welcome to Back Chat. What do you got I'll for us this what, week? I'm going to... What do you got? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go grab a pair of headphones because for the last 45 minutes... Oh, it's been four minutes. You told me we're wearing headphones. Like, I would like I'm anyone who watches this podcast to go and fact check how many times has Dan not worn headphones on this podcast? Okay. If it is less than 100%, I'm wrong. Yes. Because <laughs> I think Dan wears them every week. I, I do. I, I always have them, but sometimes they're tucked away. Right, I don't so have it, right. but it's causing grief, anxiety, stress. So I'm going to go. None of those things. I just find it interesting that you have no While you read reason. out the sponsors, I'm going to grab a pair of headphones. Just wondering okay. if you've got anything to add to us for this week. It's a little bit antsy in here at Backchat Studio. I'm going to be on, on the tra- project tonight. On the project. That's huge. Project. Back chat. The new Peter Hellier. Live. Peter Hellier. Do you know no. what you're talking about yet? No. Don't even know really what the project is. I got a got a call from the producer. Okay. Um, do you want to come on the project? I was like, project. Yes. Like, yeah, great. Love to. Love to. What the fuck's the project? <laughs> what is it? It's on Channel 10. It's news, but not as you know it. Which I think is the slogan. <laughs> is it? I think it is. I think oh that's the slogan. God. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to hold my opinions back because, um, look, if you're on it, then great. Is it a bit, you know how I get confused with like left and right wing politics? Is it a bit one of those? It's very left. Right. Which is what? Oh, yeah. no, nah, but they tr- they bring on like certain oh, hosts to, to, to equal, like it up. equal it up, but mm. it's always, I don't know. What will I be bringing to the show? No idea. I don't know what I don't know what your role is in this situation. <laughs> uh, you are on back chat. We're I'm loosening things up a little bit. Yeah, good. Oh, you, no, you don't need them. No, no. Oh, We've yeah. played the introduction show. All right. Thank God. I've been waiting for fucking 70 episodes for that to happen. Dan's gone. It's Scoey's show. Back chat. Here we go. I don't know what to do without Dan. Come back. Back chat double underscores. You know where to find us on socials. You can find everything we do at back chat podcast.com.au you won't find a lot of flag mantle merch over there season's done and dusted they were well performed at the Brownlow medal last night mm. um, but I didn't see any flag mantle merch because it's sold out it's pretty much gone there's a couple of bigger sizes there's some larges some XL some double XLs but that's pretty much all gone but the back chat core range is over there you're wearing a jump up right now yeah, it's Dan so comfortable and warm and good I thought it might Love be it. backchatpodcast.com.au send us an email if you've got anything on your mind coming up ideas for the show we're going to be transitioning out of footy season oh, don't yeah. worry we're not going anywhere no we're just going to be talking about other shit just doubling down yeah we've got more guests of course coming but we're just going to start filtering into sort of a few other areas I'm looking forward to it if you've got an idea send it to us hello at backchatpodcast.com.au as you heard Dan's lovely voice say before this episode, had a lot of feedback about that actually. Nice, mm. soothing, smooth voice. You can support the podcast by buying our merch or yep. signing up as a patron on Patreon. <laughs> patron, a yeah, patron. You got it. Yes. You got it. You got discount codes for all our sponsors, all our partners, which are Whippersnapper Whiskey, uh, Shelter Brewing Co., Blue Bet, Leaderville Cameras, Dean Bradley Real Estate. And Mugger River Roasting Co. You can get discount codes for those guys. Dino still hasn't had to come up with a code for um, <laughs> discounting houses. 5% off mortgage. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just yeah. following interest rates very carefully yes. though. And we're just going to work with the RBA on, on announcements there and perhaps sure. work that into our Patreon uh, schedule. Anyway, that's how you do those things. You're on back chat. Here we are. Welcome. It's a big bloody week. It's it is, huge. It's been Brownlow on mm-hmm. Sunday after prelim final weekend. Um, a couple of... Well, one good game, one absolutely god awful game. And Stinker we've got the Brownlow, man. then we've got Grand Final week, then we've got the Grand Final. Holy shit. And then you know, the things just keep happening. I was doing I was doing a bit of a schedule for our shelter footy cast that, that we continue to run on Mondays and Thursdays. Yes. Obviously footy finishes, but the podcast doesn't. No. So we're gonna be talking about other things. So I was looking at things that are coming up. A trade period. MBL oh, oh sorry, sorry, trade period, yes. Trade period. MBL starts, uh T twenty World Cup. In Australia. Oh, the, yeah. The regular, Is that coming to Perth? Uh, I don't know about that. I reckon it might be. You'd hope so. West, no, Australia, is. West Australia is a state of Australia. Or did we lose that the whole McGowan <laughs> COVID thing? It's coming. Oh, we it's got coming. it? Okay. Good. They so there's, lot, there's still lots to talk about on the Monday, Thursday show okay. as well. NFL's going on right NFL. now. NFL. Who's your team again? Minnesota Vikings. Right. And how have they been? Oh, they're one and zero. And they're playing uh, Monday night football over there, which will be Tuesday morning. So you'll be yep. listening to this as they're playing. Mm. Look, don't hold great hopes, but there's always a chance. We'll say that. Yeah, great. Who's your team? That. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys. We're one oh, and one. Oh, they're shit. No, yeah, you, no, you, shit, you don't even have a, um, a quarterback. No, Dak Prescott's out. out for like 12 yeah. weeks. Oh, you're so fucked. 
<laughs> that's okay. So, but before we get there, let's get into a big week that's been in football. Yes. Grand finals locked in, Geelong and Sydney. I'm excited about that. I'm a Geelong boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of family members, a lot of friends back in Geelong. So everyone is scampering around for tickets. I can tell you that right yeah. now. How Are you... Um you going to go with your one ticket? No, I'm not going to go because I've had to give my two tickets away to the winner of the fantasy competition. That's I'll right. be open here because, look, last week, a little bit of panic stations. Yeah. Had organised the tickets. One of them fell through. I only had one grand final ticket for our winner of the competition that we promoted all year round. Mm-hmm. Sorted the tickets. Very good. I got them. Clutch. So Clutch we're, Schofield. we're okay there. Um, before we get into the grand final and chat about that, Let's just have a little um, talk about the prelims. Mm. Uh, the first game, it was a piece of shit. The second game will go down as the greatest of all time. Our man, Mason Cox, got subbed out. He did. pretty. Was it mid-second quarter or something? No, nah, third quarter he got third subbed quarter? out, like yeah. pretty early in the third. That's rough. Yep, and we Kruger d- came on. We did have him in our blue bet multi. Yeah, we're going to speak about, about that a little later, bit later. But, yeah, it was a shame to see him uh, go down. And, yeah, one point in. And just I, for the last five minutes, you could just see it coming. Collingwood, they're going to do it again. Oh, not even, five minutes, Even mate. with like 44 seconds, I was like, yep, it's yeah, going to happen. They came out from a long, long way back. They're, they're, their playing style is something that I've never seen in the AFL before. I've spoken to numerous people about that. They just really? do whatever they want. They don't, they, don't even care. they don't care. They actually don't care what the other team does. <laughs> they just continue to do whatever they like. Yep. And eventually they know that they'll have a chance to win. They had a chance to win. Yep. Isn't that like an old footy cliche though? Like, you know, we just play our game. We don't worry yeah, about yeah, what absolutely. they're doing. Oh yeah, because cliches aren't real. Like, <laughs> because that's why it's a cliche. But this thing is real. They, yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. They have no care for anyone else whatsoever. It's exceptional. A couple this, of- um, this guy, Sorry, this, just quickly. This guy's yeah. going to feature a fair bit um, in the next little section. Sir Swamp tweeted something out. Right. Um, Collingwood in games decided by less than a goal in the regular season was 7-0. and mm. In the finals, 0-2. Yeah, I mean, is that the whole regression to the mean type thing? Perhaps. Like people are like, well, I told you it was happen- I told you it was going to happen. I told <laughs> yeah. you they couldn't do it forever. Yeah. Correct. Oh, f- I don't know. They're still almost pulled it off. Yeah, twice. No, twice. Mm. Um, if they had a bit in Geelong in that first qualifying, that would have been very interesting. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Brownlow medal. Yeah, um, we watched it. Yeah, Sir Swamp. He's been. Uh, we'll carry on some Prolific. of this stuff here. 11 of the past 14 AFL grand finals have been won by the side that polled fewer Mm -hmm. Brownlow votes earlier that week. Yes. So So who's he got? So this year, Geelong, 92 votes. Okay. Sydney, 83. So Sydney... Win. ...have, according to history, well, they've got the the better chance. No, no, guaranteed win. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, guaranteed win. Sydney, 83. The, The reason I say guaranteed win is I am literally in the middle of writing a omen and superstition piece about grand finals yeah and i have some more to add to yeah, Sir swamps okay go the team that kicks the first goal of the grand final mm-hmm. loses we heard that josh kennedy from josh kennedy yes he right. deliberately missed the first goal that's right so let me take you back to 2014 okay first goal josh kennedy sydney mm-hmm. right yes 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 hawthorne win yep 2015 first goal luke shuey luke shuey won money on that well, we didn't win a premiership. No. Hawthorne won that game. 2016, first goal, Luke Parker, Sydney. Western Bulldogs win the game. 2017, first goal, Rory Sloan, Adelaide. Right. Richmond win the game. 2018, first goal, not Josh Kennedy, Travis Varco, okay. Collingwood, mm-hmm. West Coast win the game. 2019, first goal, Jeremy Cameron, GWS, not Geelong. Yep. Richmond win the game. Now, the last couple of years have been regression to the main. Yep. First goal, Dion Prestia, Richmond, Premier's Richmond, 2021. First goal, Christian Petraka, not Petraka. Petraka. Not Petraka, Gil. Gil. You had one job. Come mate. on, Gil. One job. Gil. Gil's a funny name. First goal, Christian Petraka, Melbourne, Premier's Melbourne. Yep. So, in six of the last eight games, the first goal of the grand final, they've lost. Okay. But in, in two of the last two, the first goal of ones. <laughs> so we could be going through and trap there. The next one. If yep. you draft a Rioli, within three years, you're going to play in a grand final. Okay. Josh Kennedy actually said win a premiership, but I had to go and research this because okay. I'm putting this into the proper of public course. realm. Yep. Uh, Morris Rioli Sr. was drafted in 1982. Richmond played in a grand final that season, but lost. Okay. And he didn't win a premiership with Richmond. He won the Norm Smith medal in that game, the first to win a Norm Smith in a, in a losing loss. grand final. What was the final score? First Indigenous player. 
D- come on now. D- what was the final score? No, no, no. I I, I'm not. I'm not fucking Sir Swampy. <laughs> that the, the result was as far as I went. Okay. The next Dean Rioli, mm-hmm. drafted by Essendon in '99. They played in the grand final in 2000. Won. Yep. He didn't play. He was injured. Okay. Played in the next one though, 2001. They lost. So unfortunately for him, but. Played in the grand final yep, within three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next, Cyril, who could forget Cyril, drafted in 2007, played in a premiership in 2008. Yep. Also played 13, 14, 15. Not, you know, not that we forget that one. <laughs> uh, then there was Daniel, drafted to Richmond. Yep. 2016, played in the grand final 17. and won one, 2017. Yep. Then there was Junior, mm-hmm. uh, formerly Willie, t- talking about uh, the West Coast Eagle, Junior Rioli, drafted in the end of 2017, 2018, grand final premiership 2018. And then there was, uh, that was it. But now there's Morris C- uh, Jr., Junior, who yeah. is the son of he's Senior. He drafted this year, right? No, he was, dra- he was drafted at the end of 2020. So he pl- he was on the list in 2021. Right, right. And I didn't, didn't make a grand final. 2022, haven't made the grand final. So I'm here to tell you right now on back chat exclusively, <laughs> right here, right now, Richmond will play in the 2023 grand final. It save has to. Just save it's this audio. Save the omen. I'll tell you what. Do you want a couple more? Yes, please. Yeah, these are good. Whoever kicks to the city end wins the grand final. Uh, our first quarter kicks yep. to the city. Yep, uh, okay. Toss of the coin. Yep. Whoever kicks to the city end of the MCG wins the grand final. Right. So the only one I have is 2018. We kicked to the city end <laughs> and we won. And then the last one is who takes uh, hands off the cup last at the end of the grand final parade. I tried to, um, because... Uh, Mason Cox. Sp- spoiler, um, Jared Roughhead whose podcast is coming out this week. I was listening back to it today and yes. he did mention the uh, Tex and Cochin um, premise, but I couldn't find video because right. he said there was something about that. So what happens? Do one, does one player just hold on for a really long time? Well, you, you, you want to be the big dog and, and win the game before the game's ever yep. started. Yes, you have to just... So what happened in 18? Well, see, I wrote about this mm. because we spoke to Mason Cox about it and he confirmed Scott Penelby knew about it. And I know that Shannon Hearn knew about it. Right. It's never been public, but they <laughs> both knew. They <laughs> yeah. both knew whoever drops this last. But I remember speaking to Shannon Hearn before it because I knew and I asked him, I said, oh, you know, Bungo, what about this, you know, little omen? Yeah, thing? yeah. And he goes, uh, something along the lines of, like, listen, mate, you can just imagine Bungo yeah. gruff voice. Just like, listen, mate, game's not one in the car park. It's one out in the field yeah. between the big sticks. Okay. Don't worry about this. <laughs> yep. But mm. he's also one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet. Right. He held on the longest. Did he? Yeah, 100% did. So what, is there a point where someone just comes on and goes, all right, boys, let go? Okay. That's, go that's, it's I go it's mental games, it. mate. It's yeah, mental. Yeah. It's like yep. you want to be a little – you want to be like, oh, yeah, don't, yeah. no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. After you, sir. But like, yeah. <laughs> it matters, mate. It okay. matters. So there you go. Some grand final omens coming up. Okay, so look out for the parade this week. Yeah. On the boat, on the Yarra. Oh, my God. Who's going to let go of the cup first? I can't believe they're on the fucking Yarra. That is embarrassing. <laughs> Jesus Um Christ. Do we want to talk about West Coast Brownlow efforts? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can move into the into the Brownlow. Okay. For sure. So, obviously, Cripps wins. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's go straight to West Coast. So, 15 votes they polled. This is the worst in the AFL era. Um, as a team. In the three two one system. Yes. Next loss, Melbourne in twenty thirteen. They got sixteen. The the crazy thing for me is that the Kangaroos this year had thirty one, more than double West Coast votes. They had and players play well. They, yeah. they had like I think even in West Coast wins like Collingwood got votes in that Collingwood game. I think Collingwood got three votes in that game. Yeah, uh that may have been when Josh Kennedy got three. No, nah, that was against Essendon. That's right, Essendon and Adelaide. Yeah, yep, you're the right. Collingwood game Collingwood got three votes. Yep. And so even when West Coast won, um, Pies were like, nah, <laughs> nah, mate. It was actually exciting Brownlow. It was very exciting. Yeah. I, I was saying to you beforehand, it's the most boring thing ever. And, you know, the parts were cringeworthy. Interviews, cringeworthy. <laughs> the in-between stuff, just, there was some, I don't, I don't like ever critiquing live media. I do like critiquing media that's like had some time to think about yeah, what you're putting out there. It, they've edited it. Yeah. I know, i.e. going and taking photos in the bushes at Fremantle and then only putting out um, the players that have requested trades carrying plastic bags out of the club. Yeah, yeah. Can I speak about this? Yeah, let's go. So, yep. Okay, so um, uh, someone put on social media, someone in the media mm. put 
photos of Darcy Tucker, Blake Akers, carrying their belongings out of the fo- out of the football club yep. on Monday. The equivalent of what looks like, you know, you get fired from your job and you've got the box full of yep. your things. So I'm around. here to tell you right now, revealing, mm. we used to do that every year at West Coast and I guarantee you Freo will be the same. They used yep. to clean the locker room because during the year they can't clean it. No. So you have to take everything out. Anything that's left there gets thrown in the bin. Like it, it, <laughs> that's the directive, I guarantee it. And so- what used to happen is you'd be like so hungover because it's it's you've just been knocked out of finals. You then have like two or three days at the club, a couple of meetings, a couple of interviews, a couple of exit interviews. So you're hungover, you roll in, you do a meeting. They say, boys, get all your shit out of the club today. Yep. It's getting thrown in the bin tomorrow. And so no one brings bags in. No one no has any. Prepared. No one has anything to bring them in. So if you look at the photos, they're carrying them out in like random plastic bags yeah, yeah. and stuff. It yeah. looks... Dis- disheveled. Yep. It's because everyone at the club is trying to just scrap together anything <laughs> to put in their stuff. So Alex Pierce mm. actually went back at this media person on Twitter. On Twitter and said everyone packs their stuff up at the end of the year, mate. Yeah. Which is a hundred percent correct. And the point he was making was you're just painting a picture yep. by Cherry selecting picking. two photos. Mm-hmm. Not not that you shouldn't report the news. Of course report the news. Yeah. That, that's what you should be doing. Yes. But don't be selective. Put a put a put a montage of the forty four players carrying. There would have been blokes carrying like armfuls no of cl- uh, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, like <laughs> dropping boots behind them, hundred percent. And uh, you could see that the, the camera was in the bushes. Yeah, that's just, just it was grainy. It was zoomed in. So that's what I like calling out. Yeah. not not live stuff. Live stuff's bloody hard, mate. Yes, like so live presenting, name calling. Like Gil, I gave him a bit of shit about Petrarca, but Pet- yeah, I, Petrarca. I, can't, I can't I can't pronounce names to yeah. save the life of me. So. Um, with cleaning out your locker, yes. were there people in your in your um, time at the Eagles where they'll just go screw it, throw it out? Yep, like- hundred <laughs> percent. So there was a um, they used to put these like big um, wheelie bins that uh, they used to be the towel bins. Um, yep. So wet towels used to go in there. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, so like we went through a stage when you had to bring your own towel. So that I'm off off track a bit. It was, <laughs> oh, it, was, it, was, it was bring your own towel. And then um, the locker rooms were starting to stink too much because it's just like towels lying everywhere. Yep. Some blokes wouldn't hang them up, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so then it went to, we'll supply it. The club will supply you towels and it's just a free for all. But then blokes were using like, y- you have like four or five showers a day as a footballer. Yep. So I never used to shower at home. I used to go in, have a shower when I got to the club. Yep. Like my wake up shower. Yeah, yeah. Meetings, training, shower. Yep. Uh, lunch. Then you'd have an activity after either gym or more training. So then another shower, and then you might have, you may get three showers in a day. Yeah, good. Min- minimum. Love that. Good showers. But some blokes would like use three towels in one day <laughs> for like they'd do like duck like shower, throw it in the bin, and then so they were running out of hotel. So they were running out of towels. So then um, it went to we'll bring the towels, but you can only use one a week. Like you have to have Gosh. the same sa- same okay. towel a week. Anyway, those bins that used to be the property stewards' bins. Yep. They get uh, converted into throwaway stuff that you don't want in. For um, they used to take them up north to um, underprivileged kids, right. footy boots, clothes, training kits, and then and there's stuff. and there's like rubbish bins there as well for actual rubbish. But yes. like a lot of train, a lot of boots and stuff used to get thrown in there and right. taken away. Yeah, there you go for sure. Um, how do we get there? Um, I, uh, oh, because I don't media, like bagging yeah, yeah. live, so and then that was just <coughs> some garbage. Some were just were, were Alex Pierce, cringe. fucking like spot yeah, good on for Alex calling Pierce. it out. Um, did you catch the sunrise highlights package of <laughs> Crips um, <laughs> talking after the brown though? No, no, I missed the sunrise. Sorry. Okay, so no, <laughs> must have just missed it yeah. today. So I saw it. it. It was on Twitter today because the next morning, you know, they do the post brown low interview with Patrick Crips. Yeah. So as was he's he talking, hung? no, he, he looked. He didn't. Nah, look, he didn't I did look say too it, bad. He was hung. Yeah, okay. So it, he held together anyway. So he's he as he's talking, you know, they throw to highlights like you do on Fox Footy as yeah. you're talking so it's not boring just watching a person. The highlights package they used was the game against Collingwood which they didn't make the finals with. Yes. And so they were all highlights of Collingwood kicking goals while they were talking to Patrick Cripps about his Brownlow win. I mean, so he got three votes in that game. Yes, but, but it wasn't it his. It was all like Jamie Elliott kicking a goal. <laughs> Um, a missed tackle from Carlton, which Collingwood then converted Did into a Did it seem goal. like he had a monitor? Did he know? No, nah, he would have. I don't think he would have known, but whoever <laughs> the producer at Sunrise thought, I'm just going to stitch him up here, or, or was just a Collingwood fan. Wow. So if you, it is worth having a look. It's pretty funny. That's very good. Um, first, first time in Fifey's career that he hasn't pulled a vote? Yes. So he, he didn't play many games this season, but in 2016, he played only five games and he polled four, wow. got four votes. Wow. 
So there you go. I saw one um, Jordan Roughhead retired at the end of this year. Collingwood he played 201 games. He's one of only four players in the game to play over 200 games and have zero Brownlow votes. Nick wow. Smith is one. He was in my draft year. Yep. Played for Sydney. Um, they're all they're high and they're, right, they're all Dow defenders. <laughs> yeah. right? Absolute Dow defenders. Yep. So congratulations to Jordan Roughhead. Um, talking about Roughheads. Mm. Next week or this week. This Wednesday, our Jordan, Jordan, Jared Ruffhead, <laughs> gotcha. me, our Jared Ruffhead episode comes out. And it was so long ago that we recorded it because we were in Melbourne yes. when we did it. I'd sort of forgotten how good it was because today I was going through some highlights, put some stuff together. It's very good. A really and honest, was, open. He won four grand finals. He played in five. We, we felt, yeah, he lost the grand final as well. I feel like if you're going to do a podcast grand final week, yeah. speaking to someone from that Hawthorne era, probably the way to go. Like yep. the, He knows how to win them. Very good timing yeah. from us, um, I will say. Um, and one more thing on the Brownlow that you really loved was Norton Sunnies. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Paddy Cripps won the Brownlow, but did he? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Aaron. He won Norton. the medal. Aaron Norton won the Brownlow night. Yes. Sunglasses on the red carpet with a random mate, I'm pretty sure, who's been on roaming back chat. Yes, yeah. I well, believe. Either he has a doppelganger or he wasn't. No, I believe he's been on roaming back chat. Shout out Charlie. Um, he bought his random mate and himself in sunnies on the red carpet and then started to distribute the sunnies. Yep. Not only on Brownlow night, I don't see if seen any photos from after, no. but he had photo with Brian Taylor with him and in the sunnies, <laughs> uh, Tony Liberatore with him and, and yep. Tony Liberatore is giving like a, like a shuck, like a, not a shucker, but like a, like a hardcore, like, a, like, like Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Yeah. Rock star. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, who else was he with? Like, Proper like old school Very good. names. The best part was, uh, you know, the, the cameras rotate around different tables. Charlie players Cameron get, had them on. Yeah, Charlie Cameron. So, you know, <laughs> Charlie Cameron got votes and it pans to him and he's wearing the glasses. <laughs> it, they just made the rounds. It was very good. It was funny, One of the more funny. entertaining parts of it. Um, Josh Dunkley did pretty well. Got some votes. I think he was the leading vote getter for Western yeah, Bulldogs. He's going to Brisbane. And he's going to Brisbane. Go on. And I'm purely telling you this just to remind you that we do have an episode with Josh Dunkley. Absolutely. If you haven't listened to it, it is very good as well. I fell in love, you know, loves her. Really nah, say it. Loves her. It's a wide word, but mm -hmm. I fell in love with Josh Dunkley's eyes. Oh, man. No, even just Josh. Like he's, he's a beautiful man. Beautiful man. Because he that, had this yellow jumper, yeah, right? Don't worry about the, nah, the blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Jeez, it was good. Josh Dunkley, you can find that on uh, YouTube or on podcasts. It was a couple of episodes back. You can have a listen to that. Um, we should do a grand final preview. Who's going to bloody win? I'm going to pick Sydney. I, okay. think, I think I might be too. I I don't know why. There's just these omens. I yep. see Geelong kicking the first goal. I can really see that yeah. happening. We got Jeremy Cameron first goal. Yep. Um, Tomahawk. Sydney's had less Brownlow votes. Yep. I can see him kicking oh, to the city this end. This was the other thing that I saw. Um, there was, where is it? There was one team that scored more than 100 points against Geelong this season. Well, Sydney. Guess. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Well, they beat Geelong last time. So, yeah. <sighs> I mean, we we, we 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 did pick Sydney to win the flag this year. I'm pretty sure we. I'm pretty. I'm pretty, pretty sure I remember speaking about Sydney <laughs> winning did. the flag. Look, I you can't. Definitely did. I may or may not have spoken about every other side, but Sydney. I'm just going to blue bet right now. I want to see what the odds are because if they're well unders, oh, two forty five. It should be an even game. Look, Sydney's been close to the they're second best good. side all year. You know, Brisbane's had their time. Melbourne had their patches. Geelong's been the best side. Yep. And we'll go in favourites. Interestingly enough, I just spoke to Mick Turner from the Mick Turner Footy Factory. That's right, the Geelong Falcons. Mm -hmm. Great. The Geelong captain, the Hall of Fame, um, team of the century winger. Um, he made a good point. Geelong, um, and I'm probably going to reuse this on the Shelter Footy Cast. Absolutely, I am. Yep. Geelong in the last three weeks played St Kilda. West Coast. Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. No defensive bones in any of those teams. No. God awful. Um, they then play Collingwood in the first ha final. Oh, they have the bye? Yep. They have the bye. Yep. It's no defence there. Yep. Um, <laughs> they play Collingwood in a in a good game. Yep. But are Collingwood defensive? No. No. They're they do not. what they they're want. A, yeah, they do what they want. They don't <laughs> care what the other team. Yeah, so they don't – they're not they're putting a tag on anyone. They're not trying to do anything defensive there. Then they play Brisbane. Like, a bloodbath. Yeah. No defence. Yep. Um, they've had, they had a buy in there somewhere. Which yeah, between, between Collingwood yeah, and Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. correct. So they've had two buys, five games of junk. Yep. 
Not saying that's a bad thing. It could go the other way, and absolutely, they're so fresh they're for the so grand fr- final. Yeah. They just beat up on Sydney. But Sydney is a defensive team in terms of they'll tag probably their best player. They'll yep. put someone on on Dangerfield. They put someone on Tom Stewart. Clark will probably go to him. Uh, they are a side that is different to anyone they've played in the last eight weeks. They won't be used to it. And it, and every I'll tell you right now, everything goes up fifty percent in the grand final in terms yep. of that aspect. So it could go either way, of Give course. A bit of a they snack. could win or lose. I'm telling you that right now. But <laughs> that's a huge take. But that's a but huge take. I, I do think I do think it's a good point by Mick Turner that Sydney have had to go through these defensive slogs against Collingwood yes uh, last week, and yep. um, they've played some some strong sides. They've had to get through. No, they haven't had these big wins, but they may well, be better conditioned for a grand final win. Let's let's maybe if you want to, to back to 2018, right? Yes. You bloodbath against Melbourne. Yes. Uh, the first game was against who did you beat first? Collingwood in a really hard in a really hard fought game. Yep. Bloodbath. Uh, and then who did you play to get into? Oh, it wasn't oh. bloodbath. No, no against, won, against Melbourne. Yeah, yeah bloodbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. So you, it's similar trajectory trajectory yeah. to Geelong then. Yeah, and like. Later in the season, we, we only beat Brisbane by about maybe like nine or ten points um, in at the Gabba in the last round that year. Yep. We played Frio a couple of rounds out, which was yep. a really defensive derby. So, like, we had a run in. Mm. Okay. I don't know. There Geelong go. has. Oh, we're going to keep moving. So wait, wait. wait. Final, final. Are you going Sydney? Is that I'm going you? Sydney in a close game. Yep. I'm going to go Sydney too because I'm boring. <laughs> ten and a half is the line. Because <laughs> you're boring. Yeah, I think it'll be within that. I'd say that's, um, you yeah, know, I think it'll be a close game. Yeah, I'm going for Sydney as yeah. well. Oh, geez, it's going to be a Geelong crowd, though. I will, t- I will say that. Mm-hmm. Geelong crowd. A lot of people listen to this, Geelong fans. I'm sorry, Geelong fans. Okay. Geez, there'll be some pain if Geelong loses. There'll be some pain. Oh, boy, and I'm almost here for it. Oh, the drama. Oh, boy, <laughs> Dad, you sicko. Yeah, I love it. Fucking hell. All right, it's time for something we like to call. You said that. Oh my God, that was extremely good stuff, Damo. Thank you very much. You send it, we read it. Brought to you by Leadable Cameras. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. If you send something to that... We will read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. It literally been running for this entire podcast, mm-hmm. uh, this, is, this second stint of Backchat that's really become the only and really acknowledgeable stint not right word but you know what we're yeah, talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. anything that's ever come through that email we've read out so yes. you send it we read it let's do it leadable cameras they're down on oxford street they provide everything we do here at back chat all of our electronic equipment um we've just actually put a new set together over to dan's right if you are watching mm. um we've built a third set so you can't see couldn't it. have done that without leadable cameras go down there see leadable uh see lydio <laughs> lydio down at leadable speaking of leadable cameras Is i would just say alliteration yeah, that is alliteration. Well done. Thank you. Um, I've been seeing their TikTok videos come up in our feed a little bit, and there's some funny things on there. It's worth having Little a look. cameras doing TikTok. Yeah, so- Oh, we love that. Because they've got like a camera out the front of their store. Yeah. Right? Like a- Someone tried to rob the binoculars? Yeah, someone tried- And there's also this one where these <laughs> two guys, older older blokes, probably like, you know, 50, 60. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Um, are having a running race down Oxford Street. Mm. <laughs> One stacks it so hard. <laughs> so that's on there too. So we're right. worth, worth going to check them out over there. Stuff. Tell them Scoey sent you. Get 20 bucks off first purchase. Mm. Don't know if anyone's used that. Like a bit of feedback from our listeners. If you've used it, let me know how tell them Scoey sent you. Yep. Let's get into it. Joshua Bowen. All right. Hello, Backtrack Crew. Following up from what you guys read out in your latest episode, the one game contract will be for the Port. Uh, Port, Al- Port Arlington. Port, Port, it's, it's in Victoria. Port Arlington. Yeah, there you go. Demons. Uh, Nathan Jones drafted as pick one in the Carlton draft. As a club that is struggling to find a win, I only feel getting a premiership defender will help us win our first game in a very long time. Cheers, guys. You, you know, I, you know, I have no idea what we're talking about here. Yeah, neither do I. As I'm reading it, I'm like, uh, um, damn it. Any idea? No. So they must have talked about the Port Arlington Demons being um, in some sort of. Uh, Josh, yep. Josh, can't go with you, mate. Yep. Be uh, like, let's just say you're probably not going to play in it. Uh, unless yeah. what flights on the com. Oh, if I'm me, yeah. I've, yeah, flights to com, back chat crew over there. Per nice diem. little penthouse down in Port Island. It's a beautiful <laughs> part of the world. Happy to do it. I, yeah, I don't, and I think Josh is from over here. So, sorry, Josh. No, it, it's my fault. Okay. My fault. No, Tay Phillips. Fine. Okay. Hey guys, I wanted your take on the Junior Rioli trade situation Ooh. and then more generally your thoughts on if a player owes a club. For whatever my opinion is worth, I think players rarely, if ever, owe their clubs any more than the teams of their contract. Clubs will delist a player as soon as they're deemed surplus uh, to requirements. Keep up the good work. 
Taser. Taser. I love that. Blazer. <laughs> Taser. What's the last Michelle. one? Michelle. <laughs> My consigliere. Laser. Michelle. Laser. Um, yes, thank you, Tay. Uh, <laughs> Junior Rioli. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, have I done a proper take on this? You were, we were going to a bit earlier, but we skipped over it. So now's a good time. Um, look, I think it's a two, twofold. I think um, it's on the footy club and it's on the player. I think West Coast should be disappointed. They're losing a good player. Uh, I've spoken about Junior Rioli as one of the best players of West Coast over a um, that period of time, 18, 19, and then, he, you know, um, we know what, what's happened off the field for him. Um, he was charged and found guilty of uh, uh, tampering with a, a urine sample. Mm-hmm. Um, missed two years from the game. So West Coast didn't have to. Um, I don't sort of buy into that they had to support him, but it was the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, one of their players had stuffed up pretty poorly, brought a lot of scrutiny on the football club, and they supported him. They paid his wage. They paid... Um, QC fees. They supported, um, you know, him. What's that fee? What did you say? What fees? Q- QC. Oh, right, right. Lawyer yep. fees. Yep, yep, yep. You know, he had a he had a court cases yeah, to go yep. through, right? Um, yeah, does 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 he owe the football club because of that, or you know, should West Coast did West Coast have to support him? No, they didn't, but they should have, and they did. Mm-hmm. Should they be disappointed? Yeah, they should. Yep, absolutely. But does Junior Rioli owe the football club because of those things? No, I, d- I don't think he does because. You know what? Wh- where's the line there? Okay, uh, yeah, West Coast. Uh, okay, you don't stuff off off the field, but you're injured for three years. I don't know. You do your ACL twice or something, and they pay you medical bills and they yep. put you through. Re- do you then owe the footy club? I saw some people um, speak about it and say he did owe the footy club, but they had been involved like that, being injured at a football club, hadn't given them much in the last couple of years, and then go and do something in another football club. Yeah, where do you draw the line? I just think it's too blurry. So. Um, not that you have to look after yourself first, but you are answerable to yourself. So if he's going to be happy in another football club, I think go for it. But West Coast have the right to be disappointed. Yeah, like the 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 West Coast statement that came out, I think was pretty fair enough. I don't, mm. I didn't hate it, but I don't hate Junior. Was I don't hate Junior going and looking elsewhere either. Mm. Did that answer your question? Uh, I've got a question to throw at you. Okay. Do you think if uh, West Coast didn't support Junior through this, that Junior would have played again? No. No, no, he would have been lost to the AFL. Yeah, um, that's that's. Uh, he would have been lost to the AFL. So, is it an investment that the clubs made that they'll get nothing back on? Uh, well, they'll get some sort of player. Exactly return. right. So they they picked uh, Junior Rioli off the scrap heap. Mm-hmm. He, no one wanted a bar of him. So he was p- picked up as a mature age player, played in a premiership in his first year. I would say that he's paid the club back. They got the premiership. I'm pretty sure their merch sales went pretty well that year. Yeah, <laughs> probably didn't go well this year, but. That's how it goes sometimes in footy. And I think everyone will move on and be happy enough within the next couple of months. West Coast had to come out and say it because they want something for him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we continue on. Bridget Fee. Hi, Will and Dan. Love the pod. It's getting me through maternity leave, which is boring as. Hey, thanks, Bridget. I'm a West Australian. I've been living in Queensland for five years. I've been on the lookout for a shelter over here with no such luck this uh, thus far. Okay. Let me know if they are stocked anywhere in Queensland. I'll speak to the boys. We'll find out. Shelter. Come on. Anyway, I really let's go. enjoyed Australia your episode. Australia-wide national. Let's go. <laughs> I really enjoyed your episode with Nat Medhurst. Even though I'm a huge AFL fan, I found it really interesting hearing about the pathways in other sports. It was also cool hearing from a female athlete. More episodes like this would be great. Thanks. Um, happy for ideas to come through. Female athletes, uh, happy to sit down with females. It's not a male podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a, we've actually got one in the bank with a female, if you want to do that. Yeah. Like, you know, male v female. But um, I'm keen to interview anyone, yeah. everyone. Let's go. Put put some um, put some suggestions through. Who do you want to hear from, Bridget? Thanks for listening. Thanks for your feedback. Andrew sends one in. <laughs> What's his last name? Andrew sends one in. <laughs> Hi, Peter <Dan>. Lins. <laughs> Uh, hi Dan and Scoy. Do you think it's a short? Uh, do you think it's short-sighted that the AFL's grand final is not played at night? The sweet spot uh, starting time and let us entertain you is seven fifteen p.m. Australian Eastern Standard, as demonstrated in two thousand and twenty-one. Mm. The broadcast audience, arguably the biggest stakeholder, overwhelmingly supports this telecast time. Do they? Last year, it rated amazingly in all of the major football strongholds. Channel 7 had 4.1 million households watching it, making it the most successful TV show for the year. Yeah, because they were in lockdown. Anyway, sorry. It if was can, sold out can, in minutes. You can hear my tone. 
It was sold out in, mis- in minutes. Busiest sale in Ticketmaster's history with 180,000 fans online waiting to attend. Yes, of course. Yeah. First of course. time, first grand final. Sorry, of course it was, Andrew. Yeah. Come on. A 7.15 p.m. Uh, nighttime slot should be a lock for all AFL grand finals, irrespective of which venue it is played at. Your thoughts also, please, Dan Scoy, of the protocols of being invited to a wedding on grand final day. Kind regards, Andrew Vitolans. Uh, we're going to keep moving here. We don't have a lot of time. Grand final day weddings, absolute no for me. Can't have it, uh, even though I'll be attending one as a groomsman. <laughs> um, I think all of those points you make, although valid, Andrew, uh, they're all COVID related. It was sold out because it was never going to be back in Perth ever. They've done it. They've sold a hundred year deal with the MCG, so yep. it's never coming back here. That's why it was sold out. It was watched a lot because it wasn't in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't. I don't think it was because of the seven fifteen. Hey, you could be right, but it doesn't sound like it's going to a night game anytime soon. Also, seven fifteen Eastern would end up at like nine thirty, nine forty five, ten o'clock over there as a finish time. Yeah, that's, but they start games at seven fifty, so that they, yeah. that's how they roll. We okay. don't roll like they're over here in West Australia because. You're weird, West Australians. Phil Carroll. G'day, fellas. Our local cricket club in Rock... Uh, in, I was going to say Rockhampton, but it's obviously... You know Rockingham, this one. Swinging Pig. Yeah, I know that place. Uh, the, Shoalwater Bay sea, the Shoalwater Bay Seals is chasing a high-class spinner for their A grade. Hello, we're looking Daniel. For someone, hello. We're looking for someone with big game experience. Check. And able to knock over the tail. Check. check. Is Dan keen to come down to our preseason training and attempt to spin his way? Yes, he our side? is. Trainings are Thursday afternoons. Stan Twite Reserve. Bar is always open afterwards for recovery. Get some shelters in there and yep. you're there. Okay. And I'll come and cover it. Give a spin clinic. I'll... I'll 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 cover it like BT. I'll do a roaming <laughs> scoey down at the uh, Shoalwater Bay. Seals. All right, let's 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 try and sort that. I'm keen. I will, just in a little mention, I we do have that. a indoor soccer team that a while we'll be covering after yes. that. Um, the football's finished now. I believe it's called Backchat FC. <laughs> um, got great. Not us. It's not our team, by the way. No, absolutely not. We just own it. Yeah, we are, we're the owners. <laughs> it's absolutely our team. Backchat FC. I'm going to be covering that like it's a Premier League team. Mm-hmm. Okay, Very good. just so we know. Okay. Gareth Black, last one. Uh, Scully called it. Great call from you back on the 10th of May, mate. You told everyone who was at Chevron Wheatstone that Paddy Cripps would walk away with the 2022 Brownlow medal. You were 100% correct. So well done, you. Jeez, it would have been nice to have a cheeky 50 bones on that. Regards, Blackie. Wow. There little, you go. We are going to move straight into back chat bets here, powered by Blue Bet. That is, you send it, we read it, buy leadable cameras, get down there to see Lydio down at Oxford Street, get anything you need for cameras and electronics. But Blue Bet, mm-hmm. back chat bets. Thank you for the email, Gareth Black. I did bloody call it. You Probably did. didn't, haven't been banging on about it enough on the podcast here, but I had a session with Damo at 6 pr. Who's going to win? Paddy Cripps is going to win. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Who's going to win? Paddy Cripps. Blue Bet account, SCOE. Put, a money, put money on, didn't it? You saw yeah. it? Yeah, I saw it. But I didn't share it with the Backchat community. No, that's okay. <laughs> so I'd like to start with uh, an apology on Backchat bets, powered by Blue Bet. Mm-hmm. Um, not only did I pick the winner at about 16 to 1, um, I also picked the first four at about 20 to 1. Very good. And we did not put this up on our, no. on our socials. So I'd like Greedy. to apologise because we did do a prelim final special. We did. Which went fucking close. Very close. Um, Tom Hawkins t- t- kicked two goals. Yep. Had about 20 shots on goal. <laughs> he, Kick, he kicked three or four. Yep. Four goals, three. Lance Franklin yep. kicked two goals in the first quarter, I think. Tick. Joe Danaher does not kick any. Had one behind and kicked one on the full. He should have been back in the delivery department, I think, with the misses. Yeah. Like his, yeah, head, was, his head wasn't there. Yeah. I thought his head, I thought it would do the reverse. Mm, He'd be focused. Him in. Did not get locked in. Yep. Was poor. Okay. Mason Cox, previous guest to yes. bring us home. Anytime goal scorer. Yep. Got subbed out. Big big game player as well. Not anymore. He got no. subbed out and he looked very sad on the sideline and we got nowhere near it. But Scoey's bets, you know, yeah. it, had, it didn't help anyone else but me, but good no. on me. Good and on I you. did call it back in May. Well done. Yeah, thank According you. According to Blackie. But, um, but I think we like did Brownlow predictions the week before, like last week I said Andrew Brashaw. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week we will do our regular multi. We'll, we'll do like a four four leg thing. But okay. we do want to do something else as well. A little secondary bet. Do we? Um, okay. And we need people's input. Okay. So we're going to do a double norm double slash first goal bet. Oh, so who? So effectively, we're doing who's going to lose the grand final and Norm Smith. No, <laughs> yeah. first goal kicker into Norm Smith. Yep, we're going to double that up. 
And so we're going to need, we'll put it up on Instagram, like a story post. You send them in. We want real bets, right? And the, and the one that we feel most comfortable with, the best one, okay. we'll pick it. All okay, right? And that so will be one of our blue bets. Back chat, double underscore yes. on Instagram. Yep. First goal kick is the most exciting of the grand finals, the most exciting bet of the year, I reckon. Okay. I'm, well, I'm excited. Mm, very, very good. Very good. There's two people remaining yep. in the premiership bet yep. uh, put on at the start of this season at a special exclusive event that we held that was open to everyone. So that's how exclusive it was. Sydney, twenty dollars on the line at thirteen dollars. Yeah, very nice. Callum, he's still in the running, and Big Mark Evans for Geelong. They were paying twelve bucks at the start of the year. So thanks to Blue Bet, we put a bet on every team this year to remain. One of them will win two hundred fifty bucks. Geelong but right now dollar fifty five, and Sydney two dollars forty five. So we've we've got the odds pretty pretty good. You pretty think, good. Yeah, pretty buddy good. Okay, very good. That's Blue Bet. Thank you very much. Moving on, Dean Bradley. He's a local real estate man in a western suburbs. He's moved over to Ray White. Dean Bradley underscore Ray White. Or you can get in contact. Dean Bradley dot com. Just get anything you need to do with property. He'll sort you yep. out. Valuation, sales, auctions with this thing, a bloody thing. Gavel. Gavel. That's right. Fine starting. This year, we've done fines. We're donating all the fines money we raise to three charities here in Western Australia. Men's Talk, Sabre, and Socket to Sarcoma. We're going to get Dean Bradley, who is doubling our fines money. He's putting mm-hmm. his money to double ours into these charities. We're going to get down to one of these and do a special presentation yep. over the next couple of weeks. Yes. So stay tuned with that. If you are in the property stuff, though, please do help support Dino because he's supporting us, helping mm-hmm. bring the show to you and we appreciate his support and love. Good on you, Dino. Let's go. Sharva, sorry. Hey, Sharva, <laughs> Sharva, Sharva. Do you know that? Yeah. Is, this a, is this a most his luck thing? Yes, it is. Just say it. Sharva, tap your ass. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Sharma. Appreciate that. Will Nostradamus Schofield, three dollars for saying that Flag Mantle is dead this year and that Frio can win a flag in the next couple of decades on the Shelter Footy Cast. Mm. I hope you know your own abbreviation. I didn't. Dan luckily took me out. <laughs> Get excited, guys. Twenty fifty is where it's at. Fine amount, roughly ten cents for each year Frio should be excited for. I hope he means it. Uh, I hope he means it. For someone who gives Dan some fair crap for his reading skills, the talking skills of Will are questionable. Right, Patreons? <laughs> Patrons, I think so. Another stitch up, a whole fine of stitch ups for you. Fuck me, <laughs> get out of there, Shavia. Um, finds Master Flash, finds me. Perfect. Okay, anyone else finding anyone else today? Just me. Okay, five dollars. Will will. Okay, this is good. I haven't read this before, but just the way it's written it excites me. Will will will. Time to get the memory checked, buddy. On the prelim final preview episode of the Shelter Footy Cast, the topic arose regarding teams finishing low on the ladder, then making a prelim. I'm paraphrasing here, which I might add means you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Anyway, <laughs> but you are quoted as saying, so hang on, I'm paraphrasing, but you're quoted as saying, okay, that meant different things. Maybe a team from 16th has made one. Completely forgetting that you were a part of a team that has done exactly that. West Coast finished 16th, you dummy wooden spoon in 2010, then made a prelim in 2011. Okay, just like I say here on fines, no talkbacks, no takebacks, yep. can't do it. Okay, no worries, fines, Master Flash. Maybe put your name to it next time, motherfucker. Bianca, my sister-in-law. Okay, good. Bianca's Not your fi- sister-in-law, that's who she's finding. Bianca's finding my sister-in-law $2. We had a family dinner during the Dockers and Bulldogs game. My sister-in-law pipes up and says, what does flash mantle mean? <laughs> <laughs> gross. It sounds gross. That's what it means. Need I say more? That's very okay. good. That's what Fines is about, Bianca. We love that. Big Kev. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Fines Master Apprentice. Big Kev, 250. Part two of the Caragini trip. We're back. Big Kev, have found, uh, Big Kev has found out that he has forgot to pack more than two pairs of underwear in his entire <laughs> sleeping bag. Mind you, this is a two-week trip in basically the middle of nowhere. <laughs> he also forgot his saline solution for his contact lenses, God. <laughs> which has led to his eyes hurting for a couple of days now. So he thinks his eyes may have got infected. Bit of karma for binning it last week, the night before we left, you dickhead. It's safe to say Big Kev has not had the best camping experience yet, but fortunately for him, it's almost over. Very, Very good. good. Oh, well done. Luke Jackson, I believe it is the Luke Jackson, <laughs> finds Joshy H, $2, for ditching my grand final housewarming party to head to the grand final to watch his mighty cats have a crack at the silverware. Make it $4 if Geelong lose. Also throw in $2 fine for Charlie. Yeah, no reason. Just feel like he's overdue for a fine. Keen for that. Lukey Jackson, not only are you leaving Melbourne and getting to Frio, <laughs> you're throwing out the fines like an absolute champion. That's it. Done and dusted. 
Finds are over. The gavel's landed. Thank you very much, Dean Bradley. Uh, get our merch. Get our patron. Jared Ruffhead tomorrow. Jared Ruffhead tomorrow. Backchat double underscore. Find us on socials. Backchatpodcast.com.au. Listen to us as a podcast. Watch us on YouTube. Of course, you already know that. You're fucking here. Yeah. Bye-bye.